Renegade at Valley Fair in Shakopee, Minnesota is one of several coasters by Great Coasters International in the Cedar Fair chain. But is it the best? In this video, I will review Renegade, the signature attraction at Valley Fair. Renegade was the first of a series of GCIs purchased by Cedar Fair. Renegade opened in 2007 to rave reviews. Valley Fair and Cedar Fair were clearly impressed with their $6.5 million investment, so they added Prowler at Worlds of Fun in 2009, Gold Striker at California's Great America in 2013, and Mystic Timbers at Kings Island in 2017. All four of these GCIs have excellent layouts, and many consider them to be among the company's best creations. But without the success of Renegade, it's possible the latter three would not have been built. Renegade is located towards the back of Valley Fair, and very little of the coaster is visible from the midway. All you can see is the coaster's 98 foot or 30 meter tall lift hill, and the finale, which wraps around the station. This lift crosses over a maintenance road, and a majority of the coaster takes place in a backstage area surrounded by trees. Unless you're lucky enough to be back there, your only opportunity to see this ride is on the Thunder Canyon River Rapids ride. Since Renegade is the park's most popular attraction, it often has the longest wait in the whole park. On my lone visit to Valley Fair, the ride's queue line maxed out at about a half hour when it was running just one train. Later in the day, the park added the second train, and the ride became no more than a one or two train wait. Both the front and back were great on Renegade, and I'm not sure if I had a favorite between the two. I split my rides pretty evenly. Renegade sports GCI's early generation of Millennium Flyer trains. This means that the trains have the upholstered padding as opposed to the hard foam you find on the newer trains. I prefer these older trains because the upholstered padding absorbs any bumps better. The restraints themselves are no different. They are the classic T-bar which will continuously lower throughout the ride. For that reason, I do recommend holding onto your lap bar throughout the ride. Renegade begins with a lift facing away from the park, so you get a nice view of the Minnesota wilderness. Once at the top, you are greeted with one of the more unique first drops on any coaster, the signature S-Bend drop. While this element is aesthetically pleasing, it sadly offers no airtime, nor crazy laterals, because of the banking. It does whip you through it though if you're riding towards the back. That is followed by the ride's best element, this drawn out speed hill. It delivers several seconds of sustained floater airtime, which is extremely uncharacteristic for a GCI, but I loved every second of it and wish more of these existed on their other coasters. You then fly through the far turnaround. It offers no airtime nor laterals in the ascent, but if you're in the back, you get a strong pop of airtime off this element since the descent has a hitch to it. The pullout is subtly curved to the right, so everyone will get a nice jolt of laterals. That is followed by another speed hill. This one gives another dose of sustained floater airtime throughout the whole train. Renegade then rips through a banked S-Bend that throws you side to side. And then you rise up into another turnaround. This one gives a quick pop of airtime for front row riders on the ascent, and the descent does the same for back row riders. You then haul around a banked turn and charge over another speed hill. This one delivers even more sustained floater airtime, but it's banked to the side, so it sort of reminds me of the off-axis hills you see in RMCs nowadays. After this element, you abruptly twist to the left, getting another abrupt jolt of laterals. And then you cross over the maintenance road on this giant camelback. This hill delivered weak floater airtime, and it's the only part of the ride where you feel the speed letting up, but it's only for an instant. You then gain your speed back as you go down the drop and rocket into this small turnaround. This small turnaround wraps around the station. Riders up front get a quick pop of airtime entering this element. Unfortunately, back row riders get no airtime in the descent since it is stretched out, but the gradual drop does offer some laterals because of the banking. You then zip over back to back bunny hills. The first runs parallel to the station in a shed, so it offers a great visual for those boarding the ride. The hills give nice pops of airtime for those up front. The airtime is a little weaker towards the back of the train, but still decent. You then jump over into the final turnaround, which again gives an abrupt pop of airtime for riders up front. You then turn to the left, getting one last burst of laterals before hitting the brake run. Many GCIs blend together for me, 
they're usually a fast-paced flurry of turns and quick pops of airtime. But Renegade felt distinctly different. The coaster has elements of both an out-and-back coaster and a twister. The first half has the out-and-back elements, but then the second half turns into a twister. It has the usual twists and turns you'd expect, but it also mixes in several straight hills with sustained floater airtime. I really wish more GCIs had elements like this. And despite the coaster's max speed only being 51 miles per hour, or 83 kilometers per hour, the ride feels way faster. I couldn't believe the ride speed was that low when I heard it, since it maintains its speed so well start to finish outside of that one camelback. It also helps that you hug the ride structure for much of the ride, so the sense of speed is augmented. Now the biggest Achilles heel for any wooden coaster is roughness. This is an issue that has started to crop up on a lot of the older GCIs, not even just the ones with the PTC trains. Prowler at Worlds of Fun and Thunderhead at Dollywood were both extremely shaky in 2018, which is why they have received a lot of retracking in the past two years. When I rode Renegade in 2019, it was running quite well. I'm not sure when or if this coaster was ever retracked, but the ride was not rough at all. The coaster just had a faint vibration throughout, but it was no trouble for me at all. You could just tell the ride wasn't brand new. Last but not least, try and get at least one night ride on Renegade if you can. Because of this coaster's placement, there's absolutely no light on the first three quarters of the ride. It feels like you're deep in the woods when you're actually just a maintenance road away from the park itself. So what would I rate Renegade? I would give this coaster an 8.5 out of 10. I love how different this GCI feels from their other coasters. The layout is masterful. The ride mixes a variety of airtime hills and laterals. The ride is well paced and it holds its speed unbelievably well. And the park has done a great job maintaining this coaster. So the wild ride is perfectly enjoyable. This is easily my favorite ride at Valley Fair and it's the best coaster in Minnesota without a doubt for me. But it's not my favorite ride. I still give the edge to Log Shoot at Nickelodeon Universe. Compared to the other GCIs, I would place Renegade second after Mystic Timbers, and Renegade just barely earned a spot on my most recent top 25 wood coaster list. It's a ride that more enthusiasts need to get out and experience, and they will not be disappointed. While it is unfortunate how long Valley Fair's coaster drought has been, believe it or not, Renegade is still the park's newest adult roller coaster. Renegade is a great reason to come out and visit this park. So those are my thoughts on Renegade, the GCI wooden roller coaster at Valley Fair. Have you ridden this coaster? How do you think it compares to the other GCIs out there? If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and Muse Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.